Welcome back, everybody, to the basketball preview day presented by Hercules Tires. We're going to be taking a look at Dixie State, the newcomer here in the WAC. We'll be soon be joined with John Judkins, the head coach at Dixie for men's basketball, and senior forward Jared Green. As we look ahead, the Dixie State was picked seventh and eighth in the coaches and media poll. Looking ahead, we'll be sure to ask head coach John Judkins about that, and we'll give it just a few minutes while we wait for them to hop on. Looks like there they are. Gentlemen, how are you? We're doing good. Can you hear us? I can hear you, yes. Thank you so much for both joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you. Also, congratulations and welcome to the WAC. Coach, let's start with you. How excited are you to be a part of the WAC? Uh, very excited. Uh, excited to be in a, the Division One and to be in the WAC. I think the WAC's a great conference, uh, especially for basketball. So we're really excited, and, and then we're even more excited. We're even playing, you know, there for a while. We didn't know if we were going to be able to, to play our first year in, and, and now getting the schedule and everything done, we're, we're really excited to get it going. Looking at that schedule, Jared, what conference opponent are you looking forward to playing most? Um, probably the most uh, is probably New Mexico. Uh, they're New Mexico State, they're probably one of the, they're the best team in the WAC. They have been for many years, and we just like a challenge. So we're that's probably the one of the most favorite games for me I'm excited for. Coach, for you, what can fans expect to see when Dixie State steps on the court? Uh, well, we first, we hope we have fans in the crowd. That's the first thing. We hope they let us do that. But, uh, you know, I, I think, um, you know, here in St. George, if people know how we play and stuff, we like to get up and run and, and kind of make it fun that way. So uh, we, we expect to do that again. But, again, it's our first year in. We're going to have to make some adjustments of, what's best for us um, in our, our situation. But uh, I will promise you this, we will compete and we will give it everything that we have. And so uh, people come and watch those games. They'll, they'll see a good show that way. Coach, you mentioned those adjustments. What are some of those? Well, obviously it depends who we're playing and, and what their strengths are to our adjustments. Obviously our first year going division one, um, what I, what I see watching film of, of last year's uh, WAC people, I see the, the size, I see the strength, uh, things like that that we maybe don't have right now just because our first year in. So that's something that we have to maybe use to our advantage, uh, maybe play a little more quicker, small ball, because we don't have the size that maybe other schools have. But you know, a lot of different things that we have to look at. And, and again, we're just we're excited just to, just to be able to compete and play in the WAC. Jared, the team last year went 23-7, and seven, had a chance to go to the NCAA AA D2 tournament, obviously got canceled because of the pandemic. How do you continue that success into this year? Um, to continue that success, we, we really grew a family bond with each other. We always helped each other out. Um, we, are, we always had that family uh, community vibe, and we were just going to continue building on that this year to know each other's strengths and weaknesses and get them the ball to – where they can be the most successful at and be able to help each other out the best that we can. And coach, with games going back to back on Friday and Saturday, how do you adjust your training schedule and game prep? <laughs> uh, funny you ask that question because that's exactly what we did last year in the RMAC. We played back to back. So we're kind of used to that. Uh, not a big fan of it. Uh, one for uh, the players to to have a day to get kind of rest. And if you have any kind of an injury, it's always tough to, to get back. But, uh, you know, it's something that we've done the last two years with being in the RMAC. So we're, we're used to it. Uh, the different things can be tough for us is to travel, knowing where to stay, where, you know, it's our first year. We just got to learn, learn the ropes of where to, where to stay, where to travel, where to eat, where the gyms are. Those are going to be the toughest things for us right now. But the back to back, I think, uh, it, we're used to it, so it should be easier, but it's going to be tough for everybody. It's not like one team does it, one team doesn't. So it's it's going to be fair. I get it. I, I get why they did it. Um, we just have to adjust, and hopefully it's just this one year, and we can go back to the Thursday, uh, Saturday stuff. So I think it's better for our student athletes to have that day in between. Coach, one more for you. Jared mentioned playing New Mexico State. You'll open up conference play against them. How does playing them in the first – weekend of conference play help success possibly going down the rest of the road well it's kind of welcome to the whack i guess that's how it is <laughs> that they did that for it you know let us play the best team in the conference but no we're uh, they're they're very good i mean watching the last couple of years it's they're impressive um the, the good thing that we like is we got them home 
you know, we got them at our place and, and uh, I know our fans are really excited when the schedule came out to see that, like, hey, that's our first, co our first conference games at home and it's against the best team in the conference. Uh, we, we know we got our hands full, but we're, we're excited. I'm glad Jared said that because that's how we do. We prepare one game at a time and, and, uh, and I think that will be our first big challenge, but, but what, what do you do? It's, we're going to be excited. It's going to be fun. Jared, another big matchup is going up against Gonzaga right after Christmas. How does that matchup possibly prepare you for taking on New Mexico State? Um, that matchup will be uh, very good for us because they're one of the top teams in the nation. They always have been. They have a great coaching staff and a great program. And so just being able to face those tough opponents and being able to adapt to certain situations during that game, um, we'll be able to better uh, grow that, again, team family members, family vibe, and be able to go into the whack knowing that we have already uh, faced a tough opponent and that we can do it again. You mentioned that family vibe on the team. For both of you, and Coach, we'll start with you, how are you feeling about the team's chemistry this year? <laughs> well, that's another good question. You got some good ones. We, uh, again, just practice as much as we can. We've, we've had uh, some days everybody's there and so forth. So I think this new team, we got seven new players. Um, anytime you bring new ones in, especially freshmen, it takes a little while to get that family uh, history or connection going. Uh, but we've done some fun things, some activities. We're going to do some more before it starts to kind of get that family build and bond thing together. Because I think that's very important. Just like you said, we, we, we try to do that in practice. Um, you know, we, we change teams a lot so that they can be playing with different guys and learn what their strengths are and stuff like that. So. Um, we, we try to do those kind of things, but again, with the new team, new guys coming in, it's it's a little tougher. It's taking a little bit longer than than normal because last year we we had almost everybody back, and so it was it was kind of nice. But uh, the new guys are are fitting right in, and they uh, they're jumping right there and helping us a lot. So it's exciting. And then Jared, for you being a player, how are you feeling? The team's chemistry is this year. Um, it's uh it's going really well. Uh, we've all figured out some people's strengths and weaknesses again that we just need to, again, in practice, we switch up teams. So we just be able to play with everyone and play to the best of our abilities during practice to compete and just get better each day and figure out what everyone's role is and just be able to stick to that. I'm now going to throw it over to Chris Thompson for media question. Okay, thank you, Rachel. Uh, we will start off with Michael Navarrete. Yeah, Coach, uh, I'm, I'm sure you saw senior forward Hunter Schofield was, earned some preseason recognition by both the coaches and the media. Uh, how do you think his game translates to Division I? Uh, I, hope, I hope good. <laughs> he's, a, he's a good player. He had a great year for us last year uh, being a JC transfer. That was his first year. I thought he, he came on really strong, uh, especially at the end of the year. We started him at the five uh, to start the year, and then we uh, the Jared kind of got better and better, and, and we, we – decided to play Jared more at the five and, and Hunter at the four. Um, Hunter's played inside his whole life, so it was a little bit of adjustment for him to play the four and kind of do a stretch four. And I thought he did a good job with that. And by the end of the year, I thought he was right where he needed to be. So, um, again, I think he's ready for the challenge. He knows it's going to be a tougher league. He knows it's going to be bigger, stronger guys. Um, so I, I think he's ex excited for the challenge, and so are we. And I just think uh, – I think he's going to do fine. He's a great player. He's a competitor. He's, a, he's great to coach. He's, he's very coachable and listens and does exactly what you ask him to do. And that, as a coach, that's, that's all you can hope for. Uh, John Akers. Uh, we'll circle back to John. Kyle McDonald. Jared, this is Kyle McDonald with Wack Coops Digest. I wanted to – I don't know if it's been brought to you guys' attention. The last time that New Mexico State lost a conference game was to the newest member of the WAC in California Baptist in their first game of the 2017-18 season, or 2018-19, excuse me. Does that give you guys any kind of confidence? Is there a thought that we're going to be the next, you know, we're the newest member here, we're going to knock the Aggies off? You know, have you seen that? Have you thought about that, talked about it at all? I know you're excited to play the Aggies to, to begin the season. Um, yeah, we're excited. Uh, we just as a playing, we're 
players and coaches were excited to play them. That, but we feel that anyone and any day can be beaten. And so we're just going with that mentality that even though they could be the better team, but if we play hard, that anyone can beat any given day. Let's try John Akers again. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, this for both of you. I was wondering what your reaction was to the extra season of eligibility that's uh, being granted to, uh, to players for next season um, well, and seasons beyond that. Uh, Jared, if you could start with that. Um, you know, uh, very excited about it. Uh, it just gives us another year to grow chemistry with uh, the same players and get new players in to grow that family bond and see how the season goes out and just very excited about it. Do you think you'll use it? Do you have, have you thought about it that far? Um, I have thought about it. I'm meeting with um, my counselors this week to figure out what I can do to make that happen. Um, so I have been thinking about it. Me and my family, uh, me and my wife have been thinking about it and seeing what best would be for our family. Great, Coach? Uh, I think it's a great thing. Um, it needed to be done. Um, with uh, <clears throat> this year, with this COVID stuff going on, you never know. I mean, it's so scary that you know, one of your guys comes up with it before you head out to a road trip, and now you have to call and cancel those games. And, you know, there's a chance that you might only have half your season with cancellations. And so it's just – it would be fair to these seniors um, to, to not get their year back. Like Jared said, we're going through that with the ones that we have. A lot of ours are right on track to uh, to graduate on time. And so that's what he's talking about is, is, is there other classes that he can take uh, to work towards maybe a master's if we have that program that he wants. We're looking at a lot of different things, but uh, I think it's the right move uh, for the NCAA to make that just because if you just don't know how this year is going to go, and I just don't think it's fair that if we only get to play half our season that that counts as towards the whole, whole thing, mainly for our seniors, but also the underclass, but I think it's going to be great for them too, that their school, they're, they're, it's going to help them with their school, that they have that extra year because – we all know it takes about five years to graduate uh, playing basketball and doing the things you do. It's, it's, it takes some time. So I think it's good. Um, there's something we haven't really talked about with our guys that much. Um, but I think more at the end of the season, or, you know, we're working on it to get it ready, but more at the end is we'll see. But we got to know because of recruiting, we got to know if they're coming back or they're not. But uh, that's something they have to decide. We'd love to have them all back. Uh, but some of them might, you know, get a job or get a better situation and take it. So we'll see how it goes. If I could have a real quick follow. I, I noticed that you've had roster size of like 18, I think, this season. So you must be comfortable with, with carrying that many players, um, where some coaches might not be. Yeah, well, we, like, yeah, we redshirted quite a few of them. And, and uh, we like it for practice purposes. And, and uh, it's, been, it's been good for us. So we're, we're hoping to keep this going. Thanks. Hey, uh, Chris from the Spectrum. Hey, Coach. Uh, just wanted to ask you really quick about the Gonzaga game. Uh, how did that game come together schedule-wise? And what does it mean that that game is on your schedule, probably one of the biggest games that this program has ever played? Well, it, <clears throat> they called us. Um, we, uh, we've been, we talked to them earlier trying to get some games. Like, like I said earlier in my comments uh, in the, on the web and whatever, we, uh, we had our schedule done. Everything was good. We had some really good games uh, scheduled starting on uh, November 10th. And then when the, uh, they made the announcement to move everything back, we kind of lost those games. So we got back on the phone and called those that, uh, that we were working with throughout the year. And so they were one of those. And uh, uh, my assistant, Coach May, uh, was at BYU and, and knew, knew those guys really well. And, and so we called them again and just said, hey, what do you think? And they came back to us and said, hey, it's perfect timing. We were looking for a game too. And uh, luckily it, it worked out for all of us. So we're, we're excited uh, for it to go up to that place, like, like Jared said, to play a top five team in the nation. Um, it, it's, what a great experience that our guys will have. Um, we hope that we can compete and, and keep it close and, and see how things go. But it, it should be a fun environment and uh, some that our players will never, hopefully never forget. Uh, Paul Corn. Coach, what is this uh, lifetime basketball arc like for you to have been a player there as a junior college and then be 
the university's first Division One coach? Uh, well, I, I talked to somebody the other day about that. I said, I guess I've been coaching too long. If I can go from a junior college to a Division Two to a Division One, all at the same school, it's probably time for me <laughs> me to retire. But uh, no, I, I love it. I mean, St. George is a great place to live. If you haven't been here, uh, when you come, you guys are you see what we're talking about. It's it's an uh, incredible place to raise your family and to live. And and uh, I'm well, I'm excited to be back. And after I played here, and then uh, to see the growth that this uh, university has done, it's it's just been uh, extend. It, 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 what can I say? I'm just so excited to be part of it. But Division One. Uh, when I first got into coaching, that's what I wanted to be, was a head coach Division One level, and I wanted to do everything I could do to be there. And, and it kind of changed throughout the years once you start having kids and different things. And, and now my dreams come true, and I'm at the same place that I've been for quite a while. So it's even better. So I'm excited, and um, I know my family's excited for it to, to be here. We know it's going to be tough. We know that. We know it's going to take some time. Uh, but this university and this community here in St. George is, is so excited for this. Uh, we just can't wait to get started. Kevin Dixon. Uh, Devin Dixon, ESPN. Okay, uh, we will go to Kyle McDonald. John, we talked on the on the Black Hoops Digest podcast last last week. How is the health of your guys? I know you were talking about some guys are dealing with injuries, especially your big guys. How how have they come along over the past week or so? And will they be ready, you know, when you tip off in November? Yeah, everything's good. Everything's good so far. Um, we're, again, we just, uh, like Jared said, we're just trying to get better every single day. And, and our guys are doing it. And it's, it's fun to see uh, the new guys as well as the returners. The returners you're talking about are big guys. Most of our big guys are returners. Um, have really done a great job of helping the new guys, the new big guys coming in. And, you know, we're just trying to get everybody in shape. And, uh, you know, with this COVID thing, I think it hurt a lot of players, the newcomers and even returners of their summer workouts and different things to get them in shape. And that's what we've been trying to do right now is, is get them going. And, and so far it's been good. So. Everybody's ready to go. Uh, Devin Dixon, do we have you? Okay, let's go with uh, Chris from the Spectrum again. Hey guys, uh, going back to the schedule a little bit, um, I've noticed you play basically every D1 school in Utah. Um, for both of you guys, what does that mean to you that you get to play these teams from all across the state? In your first year too I mean it, to play every single one of them has to be kind of like a, a maybe a thing of pride saying you know maybe we can hang with these guys too okay. um yeah it's gonna be in it'll be fun it'll be interesting so we'll see who is the best team in Utah and just figure out what we can do to become that make that a game and just be able to compete with every single team in Utah um, yeah, you're right on the question. We try to get uh, only one we don't have on our schedule from Utah is the University of Utah, um, and we we worked on that one quite hard. Uh, BYU, sorry, I missed up two. BYU and Utah. BYU we had scheduled early in the year until the COVID nineteen thing happened. We lost them, but uh, we hope we can get them back. We have played both those schools in the past. Uh, when we were Division Two, and and we're excited to to play them Division One, and, th and they both have said that they want to do it. Um, I think it's something good for our state to do. Um, Utah State was one of the first ones to call us and invite us to come up and play there. I and mean, Coach Smith is a great guy, and that's again that's where I played. And I'm excited to to go up there and and play up there again. And then Weber State, um, you know, proud of them. They gave us a call when all this thing happened and and said, hey, why don't we start doing a home and home and we'll start it at your place. And that was one of the hardest things for us scheduling is to try to get games at home. Everybody wanted to play us, but they all wanted us to go to their place. And so when Weber State was willing to come to our place, uh, we thought that was great. Uh, Utah Valley, obviously, being in the WAC, we'll play them twice. And then it was great to get SUU, Southern Utah, uh, played us, which I think is going to be a great rival for us being 50 miles away. Um, it should be a lot of fun to keep this – this connection going, playing them at least every year, maybe even twice in a year, uh, home and home. We'll see how that goes. But, uh, you know, we're really, really excited to, to play the Utah schools. And like Jared said, that, that's what the fans want. 
And I think that's what our players would want as well. Acres. Yeah, Coach, I have another follow-up on the uh, eligibility thing. You mentioned that you redshirted your players a lot, and I don't know if that was a one-time thing uh, as you've moved into the WAC, but it, will there be a need to redshirt here in the in future seasons with, with players having five years to compete? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, you know, I think uh, they'll be way ahead, which is great. Um, but, again, a lot of times what we redshirt kids for is we do, they're just not ready for it yet. You know, they're just not uh, where they need to be. And so we, we do that. Um, <clears throat> we hope that uh, these five that we've done decided to redshirt this year can be ready for next year, but we don't know that until, until the, the end of the year. So I think this new five-year thing, like you said, getting this year back uh, could change a lot of things for us in the future for next year. But uh, the following years, we hope we keep it the same and keep those 18 guys. That's, that's kind of our plan. Thanks. Uh, Paul Coro. Sorry, I had the mute on. <laughs> uh, for, for both of you, just uh, the idea of you've seen other programs go Division two to Division one with success. What do you see as the biggest key in transferring that level seamlessly? <laughs> That's a good question, too. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's weird you said that because Cal Baptist and Grand Canyon were both in uh, the Pac West with us when we first went to Division II. Um, and to see them, what they've done, I guess we got to build a new gym because that's what Grand Canyon did and that's what Cal Baptist did. Uh, so maybe we got to do that. Maybe our president will hear this and maybe get a new gym out of this. But no, uh, um, you know, I, we saw what they've done and, and how successful they've been. And, and, uh, we think that uh, the role model and the way that they did it is kind of how we want to do it. And uh, we will keep in touch with them and, and learn from them. And, and uh, cause they've done a great job of making that transition from D2 to D1. And we hope that we can do exactly the same thing. And, and that's the plan. Um, and I think we, we have a good chance to do that. Okay, last question, we'll go to Kyle McDonald. John, I talked to you about this in a podcast episode, so I'm going to ask Jared about this. Jared, I don't know if Coach has talked to you about the rivalry between Utah Valley and Dixie State from back in the junior college days. You know, and you've, we've talked about Southern Utah and playing all the Utah schools. How exciting is it to be able to renew a long-standing rivalry with Utah Valley that kind of had to take a hiatus when, it, you know, the Wolverines went Division One? Has he talked about that and renewing that and how it's going to be fun that they're back in the same conference again? Um, no, we haven't really talked about it, but uh, it's going to be fun. It's another game, and it'll be fun to compete with them again. Uh, we've seen how we've uh, compared with them, and it'll just be a fun matchup to rekindle that uh, competition and see how it goes when we play them. Yeah, those guys, these guys up here, they don't – know that rival like you're talking about when we were at uh, division or excuse me the junior college ranks it's been we've gone through four or maybe five coaches Utah Valley has gone through since that time so it's maybe that rival's not as uh, big as it used to be but we hope that we can uh, we can bring it back which which I think it will uh, one of the assistant coaches there Todd Phillips was in the same junior college league as we were before so I think that's going to be a part of it a lot of our players, uh, Jared being one, he played in that that junior college league too at North Idaho and stuff. So I, I think uh, I think it's going to be fun to see that. Uh, but again, it's a whole new team with Mark Madsen taking over uh, paired to uh, Mark Pope. I think it's a little bit different, but I think a lot of our guys are, especially the ones from Utah, understand that how fun this game is going to be and hopefully be a big rival throughout the years. I know our fans know that. Um, with Utah Valley and what they've done. And it seems like a lot of kids from our local schools here in high school go up there for a year or two. And so I know it's going to be fun to go play them. And we might have a lot of St. George fans up there maybe cheering for them instead of us. But it should be, should be a fun rival. Okay. Uh, Dixie State head coach John Jackson, senior forward Jared Green, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.